Those deer really are gorgeous in the South Yard. They really are gorgeous in the South Yard. It's really fun to watch them. I'm pretty convinced they're the same bucks that we saw last year that had the does with them. I think you're probably right. I contacted the Arizona Fish and Game Department to find out if there's any kind of way to dispose of these deer, and the answer is no. Nope. It's a big game, and it requires a specific permit. No. This is a section of the bed that hasn't been messed up. These are the pink eye purple hole peas. And this side of the bed they haven't noticed yet. So even the stuff that's sticking out has not been touched. Now when you get down to this end, these beans were devastated before the ropes and stuff were put up. These are these were purple, royal purple beans. Uh, peas, yeah, beans. And uh, yeah, they just chopped the tops out of them. That's why it looks so funny. Yeah, they're really good bean. I'd, I'd much rather be eating them, having them eat them. Yeah, really. Now, last night, this, this orange strap was not there, and, the, uh, and they did manage to nibble off some of the purple hill peas on this edge, but only the ones that were sort of sticking out. So there's now a couple of more ropes there that weren't there last night, and we're hoping that that will be enough to keep them off the rest of the bed. Yeah, we have the white flags to flap around, so hopefully it'll make them skittish and make them stay away. And this is the center bed. This is our, uh, these were Carson yellow beans, and we left it as a sacrificial bed, basically. Uh, they weren't doing well anyway, so we figured, well, let them eat them. So they have. Uh, this is the last bed on the row there that has um, provider beans and cabbage. Yeah, we use the hoops that we normally use for row covers, and we put some ratty old row cover over right. the top. Again, just try to make something to distract them, make them want to go away, yeah, or at least from there. So far, they haven't touched them. This is red callaloo. You'll notice we have some red callaloo sticks now. Uh, they cleaned off the rest of the leaves last night, so those are completely bare, and... There is one okra pod left on this plant. I'm leaving it there. I figure if it grows, cool. I managed to harvest one yesterday. So uh, if it gets big enough, great. If not, whatever. This is where they've been stomping around in the old corn bed. And this central bed used to be full of the most luscious tomatoes ever. Lots of homesteads, Incas, cherry tomatoes, just all kinds of stuff. And they actually really got in with their foot feet in this bed, chomped off the tops, and stuck their heads way down and pulled out even the green tomatoes that were down inside. So yeah. I did harvest, I think, two maybe today. We probably lost 40 pounds of tomatoes. Oh, at least. Bed. At least. Uh, they don't really seem to care much for basil, though. They left most of the basil alone. Yeah, but yeah, there's, there's a big footprint uh, that wasn't there yesterday. But they just, they're just literally putting their feet up in the bed and chomping away. So I harvested everything out that I could, and I'm glad I had actually harvested it down pretty, pretty much the day before. And there's the basil that they don't seem to care for. Well, at least they don't care for it yet. Yeah. Yeah, we've noticed that. First, they eat the things they like best. Now, the ground cherries are doing pretty well. They yeah. got munched when we had just the plastic netting over the top of it. Irene grabbed some things that we have around the ranch and she put it over the bed. A couple of tent poles and some field fence and some chicken wire and it's hard work left everything. Those are the poblano peppers or what's left of them. There's no peppers there. Oh no. Well they, they've stripped all the leaves off of them. So apparently poblano pepper leaves are delicious too. And uh, yeah. If you remember right next to the poblano peppers was a little brassica bed that I had planted. It's now a uh, runway for deer, 
And there's actually uh, like two of the brassicas left over here, I think. Those look like, I think they're probably kohlrabis. Those are kohlrabi. But uh, yeah, that's it. Everything else has been stomped on, eaten, or something else. So yeah, it uh, not happy, not a happy camper. The, the kohlrabi that was over here has been chomped completely. And it, they've even eaten a lot of the kale, which is something they completely left untouched until last night. So they didn't care for kale. <laughs> Here's another tomato bed. Um, you can see what they do to the top of those tomato plants. Yeah, they just like chew them off and strip all the leaves off. Now, I can't really be upset terribly with the deer because it's really dry. We've had less than three quarters of inch of rain in the past six months. There's really nothing much growing out There's there. There's no browse outside. No, I think they should move to a different part of the state. I agree. Uh this these two beds knock on wood they have not done much damage to yet they have uh chewed around on the edges a little bit on a couple of the cucumbers but that's it and i was kind of surprised they didn't get into the sweet potatoes but i'm not going to complain yeah here they are in the south yard heading the right direction heading away. the right way <laughs> yeah really uh, they wandered through and you know it's it's i won't say it's bright daytime here because this was early morning this is probably you know five or six in the morning but yeah, uh, and the end of a deer that I like to see, yes. <laughs> I just wish it were moving a little faster going south. Yeah, yeah, I'd be really good with that. Um, I will say that this has changed our plans. A lot. A lot. We've been sort of, uh, we've been a little deflated this week. It's been, uh, it's been crazy busy and we weren't sure... You know, I, I thought I had my ducks pretty much in a row as to what I was going to start. I was running behind on starting a bunch of stuff in the garden. Uh, turns out it was just as well they'd have eaten it anyway. But uh, now I'm really going to focus on the greenhouse instead. I'm going to start some stuff in the house, but I'm going to move it out to the greenhouse and plant it out there. Also start some stuff just in the greenhouse. So a bunch of the things I had planned to grow in the yard, because I would planned to overwinter a whole bunch of brassicas in the yard... Now I have to figure out how I'm going to stick them in the greenhouse over this winter. <laughs> well, thanks very much for watching. I'm not all that disappointed. I figured it's going to be frost, freeze, or something that was going to get these plants. I didn't expect deer. No, that's not a problem we've had here very much in the past. We've had antelope eat the cantaloupe one time one in year. 15 years. Yep, and I want to say maybe it was last year. There was one time when it was obvious the deer had gotten in. You could see the footprints. And they stripped out a whole bunch of yarrow, which is great because it's a plague. <laughs> and the only thing that was up at that time was the yarrow and the rhubarb. And they don't eat the rhubarb because rhubarb tastes bad. It's got too much oxalic acid. It's time we have to say goodbye. Yes. <laughs> don't forget to... Like, subscribe, and hit the bell for notifications because we're going to be doing more on trying to dissuade these critters from eating our stuff. Right, and what our plans are going to be now that we have to redo them completely. Oh, well, we did them once, we can, twice, three times, four times, six times this year. Right. We can do them again. Right. Thanks for watching. We'll talk with you later. Bye. Bye.